Hi. Thanks for checking out our channel here. I had a brain fart for a second. Um, just clean up my bench a little bit. But anyways, um, got this old Gallagher in. This is a uh, the customer lives sort of, uh, he's probably an hour, give or take, from where we live, maybe 45 minutes from where we live. And um, he bought this unit brand new. I don't I don't remember the story was with it. Just, we were talking via phone call, and then I said, yeah, you can bring it by sometimes. Give me a heads up for you to show up, make sure I'm here. But uh, this is an old-style M800. It's a pre-1999 model because the serial number there is just a sequential number. There's no date code uh, in there's in these older serial numbers, there's a sticker on the inside of it's probably not legible, but it would have had a, a month and a year and signature or initials by whoever inspected it and they would have dated it. So that's when it was manufactured. But 1998, 1999 and newer, they use a the current style serial number format, which has a date code uh, mixed in with it. And these older ones before that on their models didn't have a date code. So this is at least a in 1997, 1998 or older. We'll see if you can see any dates on anything on the inside, but I highly doubt it. Um, just because of, you know, the age of the thing, the sticker probably just wore out. But it's really nice shape for what it, for the age of the thing. So I love working on these old Gallagher's. Gallagher themselves don't even touch these old ones. They just... They don't offer any parts for them, so they don't do any kind of work on them. They just offer you like a 10% discount off of a new one. But um, a new one of equal size is $400. And this one back in its day, in the, in the 90s and early 2000s, was like $370, $350, $375. So, I mean, yeah, the prices have gone up uh, in recent years on their current stuff, but they're, it's not, they're not too far from what these were you know, 25 years ago, all things considered. So we're going to take this thing apart here. See what's going on. There's a little bit of grime on the inside, but nothing nothing out of the norm. But I've, I've rebuilt, repaired hundreds and thousands of these 800s over the years. They were around for 20 years of production run for this model from 80, 1984 uh, 85, somewhere in that range, all the way to 2005 or 4, 5, 6, somewhere in that range. So it had about a 20, 21 year run of production of this model. They were so, so well made. Um, this old school electronics, you can't beat these old Gallagher's. And, um, well, see one thing wrong with it. This little piece right there is supposed to be orange, blue, red, or green. They've been all kinds of different colors, but it's black. And, it's burnt. Different things can cause that. Uh, so what we have to change on this to get it up and running uh, is going to be pretty easy, I think. We need to change out this piece here. It's called MOV. It's a varistor, metal oxide varistor, MOV. It's a um, like a surge suppression device on the AC, usually. There's also a thermal fuse hiding underneath this thing there. I don't remember. It's rated by current uh, you know, amperage. And temp or not, uh, sorry, it's, there is an amperage rating, but there's also a temperature rating because it's a thermal deal, not really for voltage uh, deal, but it's made for it's got a current and temperature rating. Um, this pass is original. It's a Plessy Ducon, the old Australian beige colored ones they used to use. There's a sticker. Let's see. Oh, it's passed by Karen. Karen passed it. Oh, right. Thanks, Karen. You did something nice for once. Uh... Let's see if there's a date on there. No load, 7,000 volts. Passed by Karen. Um, 5.3 joule output. Uh, hmm. Well, there's a date on there. I'm not seeing it, but oh well. Well, let's check the capacitor. We can fix the board, no problem there. I don't think Gallagher used to fix board on their old stuff. I don't think they can do that anymore. It's, I mean, it's like a, it's a pretty easy fix. I mean, it's basic, basic soldering and electronic skills and get you by with that board. Let's, uh, this is a 40 microfarad, I think. Yeah, it's 34 out of 40, so we'll probably go ahead and change that while we're at it. Might as well. All right, so let's we'll do that in a second. Uh, let's fix this board. I mean, we can do some other tests on the thing, but 
let's just fix what we know is bad first before we just keep digging and digging and digging into it for no apparent reason. All right. Solder iron is all warmed up, so let's see. Just from experience, it's this terminal here. Wait a minute, right? That's close. It's this one right here. It's one of these. Now this terminal area sucked the solder off that spot there. And then, wait a minute. No, no, I was right. I was right the first time. Yeah, these old galleries are just tanks of units. They just no thrills, just a box that clicks with basic heavy duty electronics. I mean these these this Gallagher unit, this whole generation is what Gallagher what put Gallagher on the map in the States. People that they buy one and have, and they over the course of probably five, ten years might buy two more of them. And then they tell their neighbors, neighbors buy two or three of them. I mean they're just good old units that run forever. The new stuff's not bad either, it's just expensive but Gallagher's always been expensive they've never been the cheap stuff they've always been on a higher end price but kind of get what you pay for electric fence stuff I mean a lot of products you know they people buy things based off price they'll look at par mac I get that one it's $179 and that Gallagher there's 400 or 350 or 300 I get two of those par macs At least the parmas can get. At least the parmas can get fixed. At least not throw either. So we're gonna tear that piece out. Gonna pull that little clamp off there. Oh, light bulb burned out too. So we'll change that too. That light bulb being burnt out is just cosmetic. It has no function on the unit besides letting you know the power's on. It doesn't tell you that. It just tells you that hey, dummy, the power's on. But he is clicking. Hey, dummy, the power's on. So, oh, where's the MOVs that I use? There it is. Yeah, we're gonna use this red one here. They come in all kinds of colors, but you gotta use the right size. They're all rated in different voltages and stuff. All right, so we're gonna spread. There's no polarity to it. We're just gonna spread the legs out a little bit like that. So there's no polarity. This kind of goes in like that. Bend the leg over a little bit so it doesn't want to fall out as I tilt it upside down to solder it. And then this thermal cutout, based on Gallagher's recommendation from a long time ago, take the legs on it, and spread them out like that. I think it's supposed to help the heat dissipation on the device. And you put it in right there to there. A couple of holes right there. It's even marked TCO for thermal cutout. Put it down like that. And these can sometimes be a pain to put on. That one went on just fine. Alright, now we need the solder. Another thing I saw at that capacitor, it's had some cracks in the shell. Some little hairline cracks in it over there. So that's another reason why oops, it should be changed. Plus, I think it's original from 1995. Okay, another thing I like to do is I like to wiggle these capacitors. Sometimes they'll, set, start to, they'll pop the solder pads, or the, the solder joint right there. But these all feel nice and tight. Those capacitors don't go bad all that often. They occasionally do, but they can be replaced. It's not a, that ain't a big deal. They're kind of hard to pull off there, and sometimes it's hard to put a new one on there because you can't get these individual capacitors that you used to offer, but now you got to put a different one in its place. Um, 
All right, let's go ahead and turn this this way. We're going to lift this thing up a little bit. The board can sit down on top of it. It's called the module ejector. Because it ejects a module like that. These, sometimes you'll get these old units in where this was in a really rough environment. Fertilizer, manure, fumes in the air, or whatever, urine. And these, this will just get brittle and just almost you can almost flick it and it falls apart so it can come out of there and you can still get the board in and out it just takes a little bit more effort which not that big a deal and just kind of tap on Gallo uses pretty strong boards so I've smacked thousands of these boards like that never had a problem one guy commented years ago oh don't hit more you're gonna break the board like, shut up, wimp. Quit being a puss. Alright, there she goes. That light's flashing too. And that green light, it's burned out a little bit, but it's pretty, it's still pretty, still pretty bright. Look at that. Alright, so let's turn it around town. Alright, first thing I like to do is do a, hmm, get some grime on there. Uh, do a ground fault test, which that's fine. What the ground fault test is, you hook it to a ground system, because I have one kind of rigged up here in the shop, and um, you hook it to the ground side, and it, if, and it basically tests the, the windings of the transom on the output, so I make sure there's not a breakdown inside. And if there was, then it would still click, but the light would go out, and it would get a little bit louder. That means there's an internal short in the transformer, but it happens real quick. So you hook a ground fit, it does it real quick. That's with no fence hooked up. Now we're going to put um, a fence tester on there. This thing's being real goofy. I got a new one I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm having a company make for us, and then if they, if they turn out to be real good, we're going to start ordering a bunch of them and, and offering them as a, for people to buy. Today it's acting fine. Okay, let's unplug it. So technically this unit's done, but I'm going to change out the capacitor just because it's the age that it is. It's already starting to go down a little bit. And there's those cracks in the shell of the, of the capacitor. There's a big one right there. And a couple small ones along there too, so it'd just be wise while I've got it here, just go ahead and change it. So give me a second, I'm going to go grab a capacitor and we'll get it reinstalled. Alright, here's the new one. We're going to plug the wires onto it. There's not really a uh, right or wrong way, well, that is the wrong way. Keep There's uh, two sets of prongs on here, a set of four here and a set of four here. You, there's a, three wires, so there's on the old capacitor, I had four tabs. Only you see there's a crack in the shell right there. But the two on the one side are, are electrically one connection point, and the ones on the other side, up and down, are one connection point. So it's kind of the same way with here. This whole area is one connection. This whole area is one connection. You got three wires, two reds, two blacks. The reds go together, and the black one goes by itself. But it doesn't matter if it's left or right. It just as long as you keep the reds together on one section and the black one on the other, there's no... That one felt a little loose, I'm going to tighten that one up. Okay, now what we're going to do is we can't use a strap off the old capacitor. I mean, it'll go in there, but this capacitor is too big. It's too big around. It won't fit on there. So I do two things. I get some of this. Um, I need to order some more of this. I got this 3M pre cut double sided foam tape. I bought the cheaper stuff. It works, but you give it a little, about two, three years, it gets dry and it starts to lose its stickiness, I guess, and it'll pop off there. But it, I've used this 3M for a few years now, and every time, if we get one back, which is hardly rare, which is rare, we don't see it's still intact. But we use a combination of this, and we use a, um, I like using the metal zip ties. 
Uh, I need a stainless steel one. I can find one here somewhere. I use these um, stainless steel metal zip ties, and you gotta use a special tool to cinch them down because you can kind of half ass do it by hand, but you can't get it down snug enough without it still being loose. But it won't break, it won't rust. Zip ties will tend to get brittle over time. So you put it in like this and you pull the little tail on it, kind of get it, kind of pull it down as far as you can. And you take this tool here to make sure the cutter's up. Slide in its little grooves here. Pull it all the way down. And then you start squeezing on it. So it's snug. And you take this little lever right here and push it down. And it cuts the tail off for you. Because you take a pair of cutters. This might cut it pretty easy. Oh, shit, no. Ooh. About these. This is probably made for it better. I'm gonna cut it, but you gotta put a little force behind it. But I like that tool because it, it does both cinches it down and you can cut it at the same time. Kind of an expensive little gimmick tool, but it works. It does what it's supposed to do. All right, we'll plug it back in here real quick. With my cord go. There we go. All right, well, we will uh, put some screws on it here just to help keep the case from falling off. It has that locking thing on there, but if that lock tab ever breaks, this case could come off when the guy's not expecting it and then drop the unit and break something, so keep that from happening we'll put a couple of stainless steel or whatever these things are made out of um, screws in the front just make them half snug all right well this one's done well we'll give the customer a call he's like he said he only lives like 45 minutes from here maybe he'll come by this week once we thaw out and snow melts and come by here and pick it up all right talk to you guys later on have the good rest of your day